So we're covering Chapter 5. My name is Mark Lamping. Aaron Regas. I'm Doug Witt. And we're talking about the five most important things in Chapter 5, design your visuals. So the five things that we found most important was start with your titles, design a basic template, think visually as you design, edit your efforts, and proofread. So kind of going into it, really there's two common options when presenting visually. Uh, one is projected uh, slides. The other is bound pages. Both are visually created in PowerPoint. So when using PowerPoint, this is when you use these five things that we want to talk about today. So the first thing you want to do when you start with the presentation titles is identify what the audience needs to see. Typically, people just bombard a bunch of pictures into all their slides. It comes very unorganized, and it's just not very professional. So you definitely want to watch how much you do put in your slides. Secondly, you want to you only want to design your slides and deck pages for reinforcing the structure. So for slides and deck pages, the great thing about them is it helps the audience understand the structure of what we're talking about. So you start with the title slide for the deck cover. That's going to highlight the name and the title of what we're talking about. Then you move on to preview uh, visual, which is basically a table of contents, if you like to do that. Um, also, you can do section visuals, and that's typically for longer presentations. Um, and it really just begin, it marks the beginning of each section. You move on to executive summary deck pages. Now, some companies do require that you do this. Um, and it highlights the conclusions or recommendations and explains the scope and flow of the deck. Um, then closing visuals. So you can even have two closing messages if you plan to take questions after you talk. The main thing is to focus on synthesizing your recommendations or highlight, highlighting a message that captures the essence of your presentation. And you always want to have a visual reminder of your main points. So, you know, you could have a visual reminder, like I said, of your main points, or you could have nothing at all, just a blank, a blank slot, which allows you to move in front of the screen and talk to your audience. Um, no, so really to the last thing about closing visuals is you want to ask yourself exactly what you want to communicate during the final moments. And this is, that's, that message should influence what you, what you want the audience to see at the end of your talk. So next we'll move on to emphasize your main messages. Really there's multiple ways you can do this. You want to look at your presentation objective for clues about what needs to be seen as well as heard. So try focusing techniques. One is nutshell information, basically a summary of what you're trying to talk about. Secondly, you can do an email technique, which is the same thing as a nutshell technique, but in an imaginary email. Uh, you want to teach your ideas. Some people prefer talking instead of writing. And then use an elevator speech. You can also use a storyboard. Um, and you really want to focus on each section or chunk individually. You don't want to get your audience all confused and keep going back and forth on things. You want to know that your, your audience knows what you're talking about. Um, you want to draw attention to supporting points. So you have backup visuals that can be based on quantitative data if that's what you're talking about. You want it to make it, you want it to be relevant. You also want to be very selective. A lot of times people will put way too many supporting points to where it just kind of bombards the slide. And then prepare for Q&A. Um, you just, you know, Maybe you think the audience will have a question you can address, but would rather not unless they bring it up. So think of a clear message that supports your response and turn that message into a Q&A visual. And then, um, so now we'll move on to creating tiles that clarify your message. First, you want to specify your point. Sometimes that can just be adding a verb and a little detail, and that will make your point much clearer. Secondly, you can speed up information sharing. Titles are your uh, they should be large, often bold face. It should be placed where the audience looks first, like at the top of the page. And once your audience sees the main point, they are easy, they have an easier time taking in all the details. You can also make create standalone sense, meaning your visuals need to make sense when you aren't there to explain. This doesn't have to be with all of them, but it does help to have them in your presentation. And then prepare the audience. So if you do do deck pages, you can have those to make standalone sense so people can use those to prepare for the discussion so you can discuss this with them before you even present it. Um, influence design decisions. A PowerPoint really defaults are set up for extremely large titles. You know, we, we can go into all of that, but you know, 
the main thing here is to not go completely basic with it, but at the same time, don't overdo everything. You want to have everything to where it kind of balances itself out. You want a huge picture and then a little bit of text or vice versa. Um, also, if there's something in your slide that isn't something that you want to highlight, then you know you can use certain things to have that not be the thing that you really want to discuss. You know, so as an example, if your if your boss expects you to see the latest sales figures in your deck, you know you don't want to highlight the declined stagnation or the declination of stocks or whatever you're talking about. You don't want to you don't want to emphasize how bad it's doing. You don't want to be the bad bringer of bad news or whatnot. So don't emphasize on what you don't want to deliver. Um, so now we'll move on to design the templates. So really, the first thing you want to do is establish a color scheme. Um, so first, you know, you want to consider the, uh, the audience. You, one, you want to choose a solid background. That's where you want to begin. Um, it just helps, it helps bring everything else on the presentation out. So you don't want to have three different colors on your background. As well as with that, you don't, you know, your text can be hard to read due to the fact that there's so many colors on the background. Um, you know, here's some good tips for designing a template. I believe earlier right here, we do talk about some, some of the things right here that I was just talking about, contrasting color combinations and how you want to avoid certain things. Um, you know, so you do want to establish, you know, you want to consider the, uh, the audience, be aware of national, religious, and other cultural differences, also business considerations and color blindness. Um, you know, you want to choose, like I said, choose a background color, uh, select titles and text colors, pick a spot color, um, something that will really spotlight certain things that you want to spotlight. And also, like I said, you can dim certain things, so it really gives the thing to say, look somewhere else. Um, you want to make type of ty typography decisions, and I won't go into much of that, but it's just like I've been saying, kind of going through and saying that you don't want you want everything to be le level and balanced. Alright, so now we'll move on to modifying placeholders. Um, you know, there's a, a master a slide master that you can use in PowerPoint. Um, and one of the things that you want to do is you, you want to make sure that you're not messing with the placeholders too much. Sometimes, just like this example up here, it's giving you a lot of things that you probably don't need everything for. So you want to very, be very careful on what you want to include and what you don't want to include. Um, Um, and then, what really, the last thing is you can modify the slide, slide master. It's really, you know, remember the invisible margin when you do print out deck pages and such. You don't want to have the page completely filled out, and then when you print it, things are missing. Uh, consider adjusting the margins, much like that, and then, you know, modify the slide master to what you want to do. Um, and that has a variety of things. So now I'll leave it off to Aaron to talk about thinking visually as you. So I'm going to cover uh, thinking visually as you design. And um, so there's five different things that I'm going to cover here. Um, the first one is data-driven charts. <coughs> they explain numbers. So the first thing you have to do is you have to determine your message, what, you're, what, what type of data you're trying to convey. And then you'll identify the comparison. So after you identify what you're comparing in these charts, then you uh, select a chart format. So these are the different types of formats. So there's a column, a column chart for time is good when you have few data points. Uh, a line is good when you're trying to uh, compare trends. Um, the item is a ranking uh, or variation among items. Um, the component shows parts of a whole. And they say to use a part uh, pie chart when there's limited amount of slices. So six or less is a good time to use a pie chart. Uh, correlation, a, a pattern uh, among various
variables, and then uh, complex correlation involves uh, multiple comparisons. So uh, concept diagrams uh, depict ideas. And uh, some di diagrams illustrate relationships. Uh, they will show how items or ideas interact. And then some diagrams highlight sequence of steps. They can show the steps in a process, the order of events and uh, repetition. So the interaction uh, it obviously shows interaction between items. Uh, structure emphasizes structure. You'll see this in like organizations and, and things like that. Comparisons compare a couple concepts against each other. Uh, a linear flow shows a, a sequence of steps, and then the uh, circular flow shows a, a circular flow of events. So, photos add interest, basically. And uh, any reason why this is up here? <laughs> yeah. So it, it catches your eye, but one thing you want to make sure is uh, include photos that go along with your content. So this doesn't really go along with their content, but it's a pretty uh, picture. So it's something that you want to make sure that it could clarifies your message, you know, it, as part of your presentation. So um, you can, uh, an important part about photos is you should alter them if you need to resize them or you can put them uh, or make it brighter or darker. Another good way of highlighting an image is put a different background color behind it to really emphasize it. Uh, animation clarifies complex ideas. So animation is a good way to, if you have a really complex idea, you can put something in there and it helps describe that in s simpler terms. Um, so you can, uh, you can build lines of text by using animation. Uh, you can build complex charts. Um, you can add layers to diagrams. And you can avoid uh, distracting transitions. The last thing is uh, text charts list important details. So uh, the main thing is to keep them simple. Uh, many, too many words makes it like a group reading instead of just uh, highlighting points. Uh, if you have a lot of text on there, it, people just end up reading it. Uh, and an important part is the fine-tuned formatting. So one thing you need to do is, uh, before you start adding text, uh, turn off features that out automatically downsize the text and, and, and change those formatting things for you. Uh, it might do something to your text or your formatting that you don't actually like and don't appeal to your present, uh, doesn't appeal to your presentation. Uh, and you can also uh, enclose boxes, and that will help highlight information. So next, uh, Doug's going to talk. Right. So yeah, next we're going to be going over editing and proofreading. These, believe it or not, are a, a pretty crucial uh, step that's often um, overlooked whenever um, you get the presentation in, you got all the content in there, um, and then you've got with the templates kind of a, the basic structure. But um, kind of in a haste, we're hurry, we're ready to rehearse, we're ready to get all together. There's a lot of uh, small or even major errors that can um, be overlooked. Um, little things such as typos, um, animations that aren't that aren't in the right order, and um, and things like that. And so um, it's always best to get a second set of eyes, even if it's not a group project. Having having another group member um, or or um, another student, a teacher, um, something like that, to just kind of look over the presentation, make sure it, make sure it looks good and, and it flows well, because that is a very important part of, of presentations, not just. Uh, if there's not any typos, but also the flow and, and how it looks visually. Um, and then, of course, with animations, um, we usually try to refrain from animations just because they are um, a little bit distracting. But if they are meant, as we talked about before, for effect, um, just to make sure that they, they're give, giving the audience the intended effect that they have. And then, uh, uh, lastly, we have proofreading. Um, this is kind of a little bit different from editing. Editing is more um, making sure everything is right, um, grammatically spelling, and then in order. But then proofreading is kind of the overall um, a project and, and look it over, over over the presentation. Um, similar editing, just making sure everything's consistent, um, the document and uh, the source of the document correctly, and then um, you know check for any last minute errors, and then um, you know color schemes, things like that. All right, so now we're going to review what we've, what we've gone over today. Um, things are rather a little bit um, cr critical or crucial. Um, so identify what the audience needs to see. Um, then you want to choose the simple backgrounds um, and the layouts, things like that. 
Um, then the three key things that you should consider when um, designing a template of the uh, establishing a color scheme, um, making the topography decisions and making sure they're consistent throughout, and then uh, simple backgrounds um, that don't uh, make a presentation more presentable and also don't take away from or distract the audience from the message you're trying to deliver. And then um, some three, three steps that are important with editing, and these are pretty important as well, is to verify the structure is clear and that uh, makes the presentation easier to follow and just uh, to go through in a, a regular order. Um, and then enhancing the visual effect, um, just to highlight the information, you know, usually sparingly if you can, but still they are um, a very powerful visual tool that you can use to highlight, like we have here in red, um, things that you need to pay attention to and remember. And then proofreading, of course, just make sure the presentation doesn't contain any last minute error, any errors that um, you overlooked or um, that are kind of glare out of the audience, because that's what we talked about. There's nothing worse than, than having a presentation that, wow, it's really put together, but that one thing is sticking out of you, or you, you just can't take your eye off it. So we hope you enjoy our presentation, and um, we have a quiz for you shortly. Thank you.